What's up, Magic players? It's Doyle, your host here on Doyle Prime MTG, where I bring you the latest and greatest in magic content that I can while still trying to have a life. This week, I bring to you the new ninja commander that makes us beg the question, is this a ninja? Sartoru Umazawa lets us use any creature as a ninja for only two black blue. Forests, islands, mountains, plains, and swamps. The multiverse is all that is, or ever was, or ever will be. There is a tingling in the spine, a faint sensation, as if a distant memory of walking from plane to plane. Our lives have been forever changed, as if by magic. Embark with me on this journey to eternity. Experience the true power of mind over matter as we ignite your spark and traverse into the magic multiverse. Sartoru Umazawa costs one blue-black for a legendary 2-4 human ninja with whenever you activate a ninjutsu ability, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. This ability triggers only once each turn, and each creature card in your hand has ninjutsu to blue black. This deck is pretty ridiculous. We will run many small evasive creatures with some solid card acceleration spells and a suite of large creatures for us to cheat into play through the ways of the ninja. Now accessible to just about any creature. Opening up with ramp, these rocks will take us to new heights. Soul Ring and Wayfarer's Bobble will probably always be our most optimum turn 1 plays. Demir Signet, Felwar Stone, and Talisman of Dominance will each ramp us for 2 CMC while fixing our colors. Ornithopter of Paradise and Thought Vessel will also help round out our mana rock set, while the creature will even give us an evasive body with which to utilize ninjutsu. Dowsing Dagger is wondrous in decks with evasion, as it can ramp us for 3 mana on a land in non-green decks. And of course, Myriad Landscape will help us get there as well, finding 2 basics into play tapped. Next up we will ensure that our hand stays filled and our options open. Chart a Course, Knight's Whisper, and Sign in Blood will each draw us 2 cards for 2 mana. Windfall, Whispering Madness, and Factor Fiction will each get us a good amount of value while ditching some stuff into the bin for some possible reanimation. Coastal Piracy, Reconnaissance Mission, Grazalax, Illithid Scholar, and Biden of Thassa will each let us draw a card when a creature we control deals combat damage to a player. Mystic Remora and Phyrexian Reclamation will allow us to get some repeatable value off a of tiny enchantment. Baleful Strix and Thalico Seer will each draw us cards as we use them for ninjutsu enablers. Ingenious Infiltrator, Fallen Shinobi, Mind Leech Mass, and Silent Blade Oni will each gain us value as they deal combat damage to our opponents. This will generally be done through ninjutsu. Our control section will be synergistic and also quite fun. Of course, we need a swan song for that one counterspell to protect our win con. And also, Animate Dead will help us to surprise our opponents with a threat that they thought wouldn't be returning. Key to the City and Rogue's Passage will allow us to repeatedly let at least one creature through for combat, even if we run out of our evasive creatures. We will even run Urborg to swamp up the play space and Reliquary Tower to hold more cards in our hand, while Blink Moth Nexus and Fairy Conclave can give us some backup plans for the more attrition style games. Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots will help to protect our creatures while enabling hasty striking for emergencies and surprises. We will also now want to look at creatures that will be trading spaces with our ninja wannabes from our hand. Ornithopter, Changeling Outcast, Fairy Seer, Ginger Brute, Gadool Lurker, Hope of Girapur, Miss Cloaked Herald, Siren Storm Tamer, Slither Blade, Spectral Sailor, Tormented Soul, Baleful Strix, Demir Infiltrator, Invisible Stalker, and Nether Trader will complete the suite of evasive creatures that we have not already mentioned. We do also want to include a few true ninjas with some cheap ninjutsu costs for the ability to reuse the ETB triggers of our large creatures and create loops. But 
also to serve for some utility. Mistblade Shinobi can bounce a creature to its owner's hand. Azura Smoke Shaper can make a creature indestructible upon ETB. And Sakashima Student will allow us to clone a creature. We can also include Phantasmal Image as a clone creature to get some bonus value from our most threatening beasts. Closing out the game will feel like a bit more of an extension of our control section in a way, as we cheat out large creatures with devastating abilities. Void Winnower will prevent our opponents from using half their resources, and it's great removal bait. Shieldred Whispering One and Archon of Cruelty will repeatedly attrition our opponents until they have no more resources to keep up with the battlefield. Tetsumok Primal Death, Toxtril the Corrosive, and Massacre Worm can all each help us to wipe multiple creatures off the board, occasionally being one-sided board wipes. Agent of Treachery and Lord of the Void will let us grab our opponent's creature cards and use them to our advantage. Runescarred Demon and Raziket the Foul-Blooded will each help us tutor up our combo piece, the Great Whale. This big fella can generate us infinite mana when used alongside our true ninjas, or at least the ones that have a ninjutsu cost less than 3 total mana. This works by using the ninjutsu ability to place the Great Whale into play untapping 7 lands, and then floating that mana while repeatedly swapping the whale out with one of the smaller ninjas. This can be done before or after combat damage is dealt. When you have floated enough mana with this combo, it will be time to deploy something like the Great Merchant of Asphodel into the loop, and watch your opponents all die. The rest of the lands in this deck will focus on color fixing. Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Demir Aqueduct, Drowned Catacomb, Morphic Pool, Shipwreck Marsh, Sunken Hollow, Sunken Ruins, Underground River, and Watery Grove, leaving us room for 11 islands and 9 swamps. That about wraps it up for this deck tech. I hope you enjoyed the video. You'll find the link to the full deck list on Archideck.com in the description, complete with a maybe board. Let me know in the comments below if you would take this deck in a different direction, or if there are any key includes that I missed. Cheers, and happy casting! If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button, and also share it with your friends. If you want to see more videos like these, or hear me ramble about how to navigate this magic multiverse, go ahead and click that subscribe button to stay up to date on the latest from me, Doyle Prime, and the happenings throughout Magic the Gathering. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next video.